I posted a video Monday about the Easter Sunday church bombings in Sri Lanka. I would have posted something on the day of the attacks, but I usually wait for the local authorities to identify the individual or group that's responsible. Some of the names of the attackers were leaked on some websites on Easter Sunday, but I didn't see anything official until Monday morning. So I posted my thoughts, and someone in the comments section said something like, I think it's weird calling us Easter worshipers. And I thought, wait, did I call Christians Easter worshipers? I looked at my title, I looked at my description, didn't see anything about Easter worshipers. Then I saw other people complaining about calling Christians Easter worshipers. So I went back through my entire video trying to figure out where they were getting this from. Finally, someone sent me a link to a Ben Shapiro video. Turns out it wasn't me calling the victims of the church bombings Easter worshipers. It was Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Ben Shapiro put everything together nicely, and there's no need to reinvent the wheel. So let's check out some clips. First, we have the New Zealand mosque shootings. There is something odd about the reaction to these attacks. There's something very odd about the reaction to these attacks. So in the aftermath of the Christchurch attacks in New Zealand, everyone came forth and they said, it's time to re-examine and it's time to examine the relationship between white supremacy and Islamophobia, between the slaughter of innocents at a mosque in Christchurch, New Zealand, and the evils of white supremacy. And that was perfectly appropriate. The evils of white supremacy are indeed evil. And looking at white supremacist groups and looking at the evil they perpetrate is well worth looking into. So everyone was ready to condemn the mosque shootings in New Zealand, as we all should. Everyone was quick to name and defend the victims, as we all should. Everyone was ready to condemn the ideology of the terrorist, as we all should. And yet, if we fast forward to the church bombings in Sri Lanka, some of the same people who were extremely precise when they were condemning the New Zealand mosque shootings suddenly became strikingly vague. Hillary Clinton tweeted this in the aftermath of the Christchurch attacks. Quote, My heart breaks for New Zealand and the global Muslim community. We must continue to fight the perpetuation and normalization of Islamophobia and racism in all its forms. White supremacist terrorists must be condemned by leaders everywhere. Their murderous hatred must be stopped. Okay, contrast that, which is a very strong statement about the victims, right? It's a, it's, it states who the victims are, it states who the perpetrators are, and it states that their ideology must be fought. Contrast that with Hillary Clinton's comments after nearly 300 people are murdered while going to church during Easter in Sri Lanka. So here's what she said about Sri Lanka. Quote, on this holy weekend for many faiths, we must stand united against hatred and violence. I'm praying for everyone affected by today's horrific attack on Easter worshipers and travelers in Sri Lanka. Do you notice the difference? No clear explanation of who was targeted. Easter worshipers, not Christians, Easter worshipers. Also, a holy weekend for many faiths. Well, I'm, I would be the other faith for which this is a holy weekend, right? This is Passover, so this is Pesach for me. I would be the other faith for which this is a holy weekend. It's, it's Easter and it's Passover also. We weren't targeted this weekend. Easter worshipers? That makes it sound like they worship Easter in Sri Lanka. Can you imagine Hillary Clinton describing an attack on Muslims like this? If someone had shot a bunch of Muslims who were having a Ramadan meal, can you imagine Hillary Clinton tweeting, during this holy month for many faiths, we must stand united against hatred and violence. I'm praying for everyone affected by today's horrific attacks on Ramadan eaters. Ramadan eaters? Easter worshipers? But back to the tale of two tweets. I mean, that tweet from Hillary, that contrast is really stunning. On this holy weekend of many faiths, we must stand united against hatred and violence. What kind of hatred? Any, any clues? Do we have any clues? Well, it turns out one of the bombers, one of the guys arrested, one of the planners of this, his name is Muhammad Muhammad. Do we have any clues as to who this may have been? I think I know. It turns out that there was an Islamist group that the government knew about and has already taken credit for this. Any clues at all, guys? Pick me, pick me. What kind of hatred and violence are we talking about? Any specifics? Um, Islamic hatred and violence? Okay, Barack Obama did the same thing. Here's what he did in the aftermath of Christchurch. Michelle and I send our condolences to the people of New Zealand. We grieve with you and the Muslim community. All of us must stand against hatred in all of its forms. So he grieves with the people of Christchurch and the Muslim community more generally. Here's Barack Obama in the aftermath of what just happened in Sri Lanka. He tweeted out, 
the attacks on tourists and Easter worshipers in Sri Lanka are an attack on humanity. Not on Muslims everywhere, on humanity, generally. On a day devoted to love, redemption, and renewal, we pray for the victims and stand with the people of Sri Lanka. Is it forbidden to say Christians? Are we not allowed to say the words Christians? We could just change our names to Easter worshipers to avoid confusion. Obama's is not as bad as Hillary's, by the way. Hillary's is much worse. Hillary comes forth and she says, we have to fight Islamophobia in all of its forms and white supremacy in all of its forms. And then radical Muslims go and kill a bunch of Christians at church on Easter Sunday. And it's hatred and violence are really bad, guys. They're re I can't really get more specific than that. Don't know how to get more specific. But why, Ben? Why are these leftist politicians like this? I think that it is indicative of a failure on the part of many people on the left to single out Christians as victims because that does not fit within the intersectional hierarchy. In the United States, the intersectional hierarchy for the left is the suggestion that we know, just based on our own experiences, based on anecdotal evidence, we know who are the most victimized groups in America. Those victimized groups are transgender people and black people and Muslims. Those are the people who are most victimized in America. Never mind the hate crime statistics that say that on a per capita basis in the United States, Jews are the most victimized. And never mind the global statistics that say on a global basis, Christians are the most victimized group in, in, on planet Earth. Ah, so in the United States, Jews are by far the most victimized group per capita. On planet Earth, Christians are the most victimized group, but leftists have a narrative that they need to preserve. According to that narrative, Jews and Christians are the oppressors, and the only real victims of persecution are Muslims, people in the LGBTQ community, and racial minorities. When there's a terrorist attack, like the Christchurch Mosque Massacre, that fits the narrative. A racist killed a bunch of Muslims. Perfect fit for the narrative. So in this case, we can say, you see, we told you that there's an epidemic of racism and Islamophobia. It's time to unite and take action against racism and Islamophobia. Vote for our side. But when there's an Islamic terrorist attack, Muslims killing Christians, Muslims killing Jews, Muslims killing Hindus, Muslims killing homosexuals, Muslims killing Asians, Muslims killing Africans, Muslims killing other Muslims, that doesn't fit the narrative. Islamic terrorist attacks are a constant threat to the leftist narrative, but they can't just keep quiet when multiple churches are bombed by jihadis, that would make their bias too obvious. They have to condemn the attacks, so they just get really, really vague. We condemn hate. Why is their narrative so precious to them? Well, that's how they get votes. If you get millions of people to buy your story about what's wrong with the world, and you convince them that you're the solution to the problem, you've just won a ton of voters. But notice just how silly this is. Suppose we buy the narrative of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Suppose we agree that Muslims are the real victims and that racism is lurking around every corner. What are politicians really doing about these problems? Nothing. Why? Because politicians aren't the people who fix problems like racism or hatred. There are times when politicians are needed, i.e. when laws need to be changed or when segregation needs to end. But when this man hates that man because of the color of his skin or because of his religion, politicians are next to useless. People interacting with other people in their communities is what ultimately reduces racism. Politicians just get in the way. Sometimes it's in their best interest to stoke the flames because that's how they stay in power. But if we're talking about hate that arises from a specific ideology, such as Islam, we undermine the hate by undermining the ideology. And when it comes to undermining the violent and hateful teachings of Muhammad, politicians are even worse. They defend and promote and praise Muhammad and the Quran. In doing so, they're helping terrorists, not hindering them. So don't fall for the nonsense of politicians who are trying to sell you a false narrative in order to keep their party in power. As for you leftists who are thrilled to condemn violence against Muslims, but can't even say the word Christians when Christian men, women, and children are slaughtered in the name of Allah, be consistent or be quiet.